have been having this wonderful experience of going around to the different sites where Jesus and his disciples walked. And one of those sites was precisely the gospel reading that we have just heard. And that is the Sea of Galilee. Jesus is with his disciples in the boat. And Jesus is asleep in the boat. And a strong wind comes, a storm comes, and it's rocking the boat. As happens in our own life, we are in the boat, the boat of life. And winds come, strong winds, strong storms, and rock the boat. And what happens to us? The same thing that happened to those very disciples. We too are filled with fear. What's going to happen to me when the winds of disease or sickness come my way? Family, when this addiction surfaces in my children or in my spouse, what's going to happen to my marriage when I find out that my husband has cheated or has been cheating or that my wife has been unfaithful to me? What's going to happen when I find out this revelation or that revelation? What's going to happen to my household when I lose my job or when I can't pay my bills? And then when we see the news, all the negative news, all the political turmoil, all the strife that goes on, all around us, the suffering, the violence, the poverty. Really, the boat is rocked, the boat that we are in. And so often, we have the same feeling that those disciples had. We think that God is asleep. Are you there, God? You know, you often find yourself saying that. Are you out there? You know, do you hear me? We are sinking here. Or you say, I'm sinking here. Where are you? Don't you know that I need you? You've had this happen in your life, and you will have it happen again, because that's life. That is life. And we feel so often that Jesus is asleep. that he's not hearing us, that our prayers are not heard. We have the feeling of, how is it that I'm going to make it? And Jesus gets up, and what does he say to Peter and the others? Oh, you of little faith, I'm in the boat with you, he says. I'm here. I'm in the boat. What more do you want? And he's looking at each and every one of us on this pilgrimage that we are on. And he's saying the same thing to us. What more do you want? I'm here. Isn't that the God that we have come to experience? The God that we will go to see in the Church of the Nativity? The one that we heard in the Church of the Annunciation was announced as the God Emmanuel, the God with us, the God who is, the God who was revealed to Moses in the burning bush when Moses says, 
What is your name? Who are you? And what does he say? I am. God says, I am. I just am. Why is that not enough? Ask yourself that during this pilgrimage. Why is it not enough that Jesus is in the boat with me? Why is it that I always want every single storm in my life to be calmed? When life is about experiencing storms, it's what makes you alive. That's when you feel alive, when you go through a storm in your life. It's part of life. You wouldn't be the person you are if it wasn't for the storms you went through. I wouldn't be the priest I am today if it wasn't for the storms in my life. You wouldn't be in the marriage you are, as strong as it is, if it wasn't for the storms that you've had to endure. Jesus is in the boat, and that's enough. You know those same very words that Jesus says today to all those fear-filled disciples, he wants to say to each and every one of us. What does he say? It is I. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. It is I. Isn't that what he said to Mary when the angel comes and says to a 12-year-old, hey, you know, you're going to be the mother of God. And she says, well, how can this be? I, I don't know any, any man. Me? Be not afraid, Mary. And what then, what does he say? The very phrase you hear the most at Mass. Be not afraid, Mary. Why? The Lord is with you. Be not afraid, Mary. The Lord is with you. Isn't that what, you know, so often you come to Mass and, and, and you're like robots, you know. Oh, here they go again. The Lord be with you and with your spirit, you know. Uh, take it in. The church is trying to give us a message that God is with us. And if God is with us, the letter to the Romans says, who can be against us? No one. Isn't that the same message that Joseph got when he was afraid? And all the other apostles? And then look at the Old Testament, the prophets. That phrase, be not afraid. You know how many times that is present in the Bible? 365 times. And if you don't believe me, you can Google it. You think God is trying to tell us something? Not to be afraid that it's all going to be fine, that you'll be fine. Mary was fine, wasn't she? Of course she was, because God was with her. Joseph was fine. The other apostles, even though, you know, most of them died horrible deaths, I don't know, including they were crucified too, or beheaded. Or, you know, and then we're in the church of the Holy Sepulchre where Jesus was crucified and where he was buried. And look at the stations of the cross. Right. He's fine. And he's saying, look, if I went through all of that, you can go through what you're going through. I made it. You're going to make it. Because I'm with you. I'm in the boat. It had already grown dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. When they had rowed about three or four miles, Jesus approached the boat and then said to them, It is I. 
do not be afraid. He says it again to you today. You who may experience the fear that comes in being alive. It is I. Do not be afraid. 